It's October 16th. And we're here in church. Nice to see you all. Isaiah 26, 4 helps us get started here. Trust you in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. From Isaiah chapter 26, verse 4. Our bass player. Once again, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Old Church of God song. The light of even night that was laid in the dark under the stone, the glories of their science state, the voice of the for out of faith, and all is out of faith, and blood, and the Thank you. 
Church of God songs rocked. <laughs> there was some great, there was some great writers back in the, uh, and he's he's talking about 1860s, 18, uh, probably even close to 1870, because some of the writers uh, had difficulties health wise, yeah, and they just produce massive amounts of songs within the Church of God movement. And so, and then along with, I'll say this, along with other uh, songs that they grew up with, just kind of just uh, rattled the church a little bit, rattled the hearts of individuals to know that we serve a holy God. And it's good to be in this house. It's once again, we come in and then to just, uh, join in with uh, O Church of God and sing praise and hallelujahs to God as we worship together. Here's the beauty of it, ready? There are churches all over the planet doing the same thing as they worship God on whatever day they choose, at whatever time frame they choose. And so they are worshiping together also. As we do also, um, I hope you can have the bulletin. They're on those back ta that back table, welcome table there. It has the bulletins and some some uh, bottles of water. If you'd like a drink, go ahead and grab a drink and enjoy service this morning as we gather together. I did not bring my bulletin up, but I do know this. If you tear off that third little piece, you can see it's perforated. It'll tear right off. It has the announcements on there. It has the church websites on there. And there are some things that are happening. There's also as you leave, there's a free pathways book out there. You could grab that if you'd like with some scriptures. The other thing is that uh, um, there's some things that are happening within the church being very prayerful for, uh, uh, man, we got people excited about Christmas in the neighborhood already. I know it's coming. I'm already seeing advertisements for Christmas. I know it's early, but as a church, we're planning ahead. So two big things this coming up very quickly. Three, if you're a kid, Halloween, they do love to get that candy on trick-or-treat time with their friends. It's a joyful time of gathering for them, but they also enjoy in a few weeks. Do you realize we're having our annual Thanksgiving dinner downstairs? Excited for that. And then also for Christmas in the neighborhood. Um, I just want to give it a shout out because we have an organization that through contacting with people that you meet um, in the school system, especially for grandkids, uh, this one of the parents is in, in the organization that asks if we would be a place they will gather toys and if we would give them away. And so that, that just lands right into Christmas in the neighborhood. We will serve our community along with other organizations in the community. And that is the church. So as we welcome each other together, well, let me do one more. Just, if you can, there is a special 100th episode of Hello Again Wednesday. It is this Wednesday. It will be at 4 p.m. And so you can, there's a little link in there. It is actually a Zoom link. I'm going to do a Zoom live uh, audience. And so it is the 100th episode. Uh, one of the grandkids is already asked to be on it doing one of the explosions. And so, uh, yes, there's going to be explosions. So if you can tune in for one hour, 
four to five, because guess what happens after that? Bible study. And so, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, study is after. <laughs> you, you be careful. Don't get too close to the screen. You might explode. But we will have Bible study. I, otherwise, I'm, I'm not going to do any more announcements. They're on your paper. But this is going to be some fun stuff this week, all right? And so I'm so glad that you're here. I'm glad that there are those that have tuned in. I know because I tuned in late on the free conference call, and it already said someone's waiting to hear service. And so they are worshiping right along with us, and I welcome them. I think I know who it is without even, uh, you know, because I check. It's good to have people joining us that can on the phone system. And uh, uh, we are actually not hooked up to anything else today because we had some problems. So, hey, we do have, we have, you know what? We get to worship together, though, don't we? And that's a good thing. It is good to see each and every one of you with us as we continue to worship in song. Kids are going to, yeah, they got, uh, what is it? Kids zone. Kids zone this morning. So, hey, it is good to have you with us this morning. Enjoy yourselves in worship. Pastor Mark. All they, all, all they have to do is say, Pastor Mark, and they just get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The splendor of the king. Thank you. 
How great is our God. Age to age he stands. I wonder if you, do you understand the words that we sing? We sing about a God who not only is before the time process that we have, but he is for all eternity, and he knows exactly where we are at right now. And not just our bodies in a position worshiping in a church, but our hearts connected to him. And he is so grateful in the sense when we speak with him, when we have conversation with God, I don't know, I, I would hope that you would do it on a regular basis. Um, and at any time, in any moment, you can speak to him and he hears every word. Actually, he knows everything as you're speaking it and as you um, are bringing it to him. He's already prepared. And on the list that was on your bulletin, there's many uh, things that we pray about all the time. We not only pray for uh, the list, we have a calendar where names are placed on it so that you can remember individuals day by day, maybe with your daily devotions, you're looking and praying for daily people. But uh, we are a praying church. And so as people ask us to pray for things, there's changes within that list. Um, uh, Trini who has uh, the two kids that her and Stephen are fostering right now. Um, she's asked us to pray for them, especially because they're in a process of possibly having some parents to adopt these two beautiful kids. And not only that, but uh, Stephen is having eye, has had eye surgery. And so uh, to help him along with his, with his sight and stuff. And so there's things that are taking place in their lives that are different. Uh, there's all kinds of things that are happening. Um, I just want to briefly draw our attention. Uh, we are praying for the Foley family. Brother Foley, uh, I believe it's dementia, has, it, it has always been creeping in, but it's just getting worse and worse. Um, his kids, uh, both his and Pinky's kids, are up uh, taking care of them. Uh, Pinky is actually in hospice. She's been in and out of the hospital. And we're, so we're just as a church praying for uh, God's anointing upon that family. Then there is uh, Bud and Jane. Bud and Jane is uh, uh, remembered from the time that the, the those pillar things were put up without a roof. And their first service was held on uh, paint buckets or cinder blocks and planks as they worshiped like we are worshiping here and prayed as we are praying here. And uh, Brother Bud, is un, he's, his walking is so difficult that uh, he is in 24-hour care hospice at home. And, uh, but uh, Jane had contracted uh, COVID and then tested negative. 
and now has tested positive in the sense of uh, uh, she's just she's in the hospital, and uh, so we are in conversation with B Brother Bud's daughter at a time where uh, uh, we can maybe make arrangements. But it's a difficult time right now, and so I spoke to. It's sad. I, I spoke to Jane just on Monday, and on Monday, uh, you know, here's the thing: they're in difficulties, and yet they're so much wondering how every one of us are doing. And so, um, wow, what a heart for the church as they are in need and still looking out for others. And so uh, she's, uh, I know on Monday, was really heartbroken because, you know, Bud's unable to get up and about and stuff. And because of her time with COVID, uh, she was in a room and by herself. And so it's been very, very hard for that family who loves this church so much. And I'm not just bringing them up because of that thought process, but sometimes we need to know certain situations as we pray throughout the week. This is really a, a, a desire, a, a, a difficult need. One that we realize that we can't handle on our own at all. And so we place these families, and there's many more. As you look at the list, we place them in God's actually there have always been in God's hands. We just join in prayer to pray for one another. And so uh, please uh, look at the list. If there are things happening within your life, I try to take, one of the things I do is try, try to take time within my times of prayer of remembering hands that are raised. Meaning, just like I'm talking about the, the Foley's and, and uh, uh, Bud and Jane, and we pray for Phyllis, and there's many more. And even with doing that, if you have a special need, raise your hand, and I will especially remember you uh, this week. I have a time where I will especially remember you this week. As thank you, and I, I um, it, it's like the same thing. There's something happening, and it it it, it motivates us as a praying congregation to pray for one another. So sometimes when I ask to raise hands, maybe look around, not to be nosy. But I'm going to pray for you, and I'm going to be like, Pastor, I'm going to pray for you that raise your hands. And we're going to be that tight in our prayer life as we come together. I'm going to ask Pastor Mark to come and lead us in a, in a wonderful song of uh, the first verse of Abide With Me, God Is With Us. pray together. God, this is the time where we take for a moment and in song we ask that you abide with us. It's just a time of recognizing that your presence is here. Your presence is always with us, but we set our minds and our hearts on you. Sometimes life crashes in on us. Difficulties come. Sometimes it's even joyous occasions that kind of uh, bring our mind a, a drift on, a, on certain paths, God. But in these moments, we just stop and we pause to truly remember that you are with us. And we are praising you. We're giving you glory. We're trying to honor the, uh, who you are, God, in our lives. By our voices, as we lift them up, by our actions, by our thoughts. We worship you today. We worship you in these moments. God, you already know every, everything on a list before even it is penned down. 
but we join together to pray for one another, to lift up individuals that we especially know that uh, need a divine intervention of holiness, of an anointing upon their situations. And some of it saddens our heart on how, how uh, reality sets in that age catches up to each and every one of us sometimes. Well, actually, at all times, God. And so sometimes it's hard to see our brothers and sisters in Christ hurting, in pain, wondering what lies ahead in time frames. And we all do the same thing, God. But as we come before you, we ask a, a holy anointing of comfort, of encouragement. And where healing is needing, needed, healing. God, hands have been raised. It's not just things that are on paper. There are things happening within our lives that we recognize around us now that we need to truly uh, take time to pray for one another. God, we are grateful you already know every situation. And so uh, we pray for opportunities that when answers of your will are placed upon these things, that we all continue to give you praise, knowing it is all in your hands, God. Help us to slow down for the understanding that, that you are at work. Help us to slow down in cases that it might be us that are needed to step into a spot, that you have a, a, a placement for us at a moment. Help our hearts to be ready and our minds to be sharp. God, as we uh, come together as a church, there's times where we give our, our tithes and our offerings. And so as we give as a church, God, we ask an anointing upon that, that the church can uh, do its best to do ministry. As we talk about things that are up and coming, you know already the dates, you know the times, and you even know the individuals that are going to be sitting at a dinner or sitting outside and celebrating the birth of you, the Savior, Jesus. Help us to be the holy, good, light, great light of love of you in a community, community that surrounds us, God. And as we join in listening to Scripture, help us to uh, be a people that can uh, uh, draw closer to you knowing that you have everything in control, God, makes things a little bit easier on our hearts, but only if we let you guide those steps. So we ask for that help for us, a people, Jesus. Thank you for being one who has an ear always open to us at any time. And so we give all these things to you as you multiplying so much back to us, God. We praise you in Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading is from Psalms 25, and I'm reading verses 8 through 15, and it's on page 538 if you want to pick up your Bible. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in the way. The humble he guides in justice, and the humble he teaches his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth, to such as keep his, his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. Who is the man that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way he chooses. He himself shall dwell in prosperity, and his descendants shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. 
My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Oh, I praise the Lord in my happy house. I'm a happy pilgrim down the glory land. I am singing songs I want to sing forever. And forever I stand. I will praise him. Hallelujah. I will praise him. Our New Testament reading is from 2 Timothy, Timothy 3, and I'll be reading verses 10 through 17. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflic affliction, which happened to me in Antioch and Iconium and Lystra. What persecution? I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Jesus Christ will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been, been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Spirit, Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. This morning has been just a, a tad bit rough, uh, and it, it actually started last night, right around 8.30 or so, maybe. I don't know. Maybe it was, maybe it was later than that. Maybe it had been 9. And uh, uh, took the grandkids up to Six Flags for the day, 
and I had worked really hard at the uh, th this wet this week so that we could do that. And so I was doing some. Uh, my thought was, okay, now all I have to do is come in Saturday night. I'll do a last minute look at everything just to make sure everything is finely tuned. And I turned the computer on, and it came on except for the screen. And so I'm like, oh, no. And so I, I worked on it until probably 11. And I, I thought to myself, well, I need to go to bed and because clock comes early in the morning so that I can work on it again. And I told Pastor Mark this morning that, you know, I always had thought the thought of, okay, what is plan B? You know, I always think outside the box. You got plan A, and when plan A is just like crumbling, it is good to have plan B. And so I knew a little bit to where I could probably manipulate around, plus God bless YouTube sometimes, and, and who, that gives you information, the good information. And so I kind of knew a, a back door of what I could do, but, and that is use another monitor, okay? But when you do it, you can't see nothing still for what you want to do. I can see, but I can't see what I really need somewhere else. And so... Uh, Downstairs, the kids are using a, a laptop where they can see, but all they have to do is push play. And I'm going to tell you this, sitting here, I, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I can, I can hear the kids downstairs laughing, and I can hear even today that they clicked the button and they got to watch the scriptures revealed to them. They are doing uh, how important it is to be in the vine, so to know God to know his Savior. And so that's what they were doing. They got a bunch of stuff that goes with that. That worked for them. And uh, the only thing that, that's really good for me is, man, I was able to get some songs up there. We had maybe some click problem. It's a slow computer. I wasn't sure. Um, I'm just going to, I'm rattling a minute, but I just want you to know it was difficult. Instead of sevens being up here, there's threes up here, and it takes... I'm like, I had to go back and go, how do I even make it good up there? I had to go backwards in my brain and open up some files. And, man, it was making me sweat. And Lauren will laugh at this back there. She's always asked me, did you print your, your sermons? See, I go through my sermon. Remember I told you I fine-tune? So Pastor Mark and I were talking this morning. Again, we, we talk all the time. You should talk to your friends and stuff, okay? And we were talking about making the letters bigger. And, I, and so... I make the letters bigger so that I can see a glance of notes and go, yeah, I remember that. And then I can walk. That's why I walk over here because I remember what's already there. And uh, it printed. And you would not believe how happy my heart was when I went in there and saw, oh, yes, it printed. And so here we are in these few moments to walk through some things that for me, I, I'm, I'm laughing in my, at myself and the things because there was so much of the unknown ahead of me, and I didn't know how things were going to go. You would not believe, I, I want you to believe, how many times I was praying, God, one time I, I really got ready, rad radical, God, maybe we just need a miracle. <laughs> Because, man, my heart's pattering and, and my sweat's dripping a little. God, maybe we just need a miracle. And here's what God's reply was. I'm just going to give you exactly what you need that is enough. Okay? So looking at the unknown. Uh, and I, I'm going to tell two, sto two stories. Um, because one of the unknowns uh, in, in, a, in a church setting is if you start talking about an, that up there, God of the unknown, a lot of times it is read, uh, read the unknown God. And that's going to be one of the stories. But I'm going to talk about the God of the unknown. How big my God is. First of all, when we talk about the God of the unknown, we have to understand the only way that you're going to connect with God who knows everything that you don't know. See, that's what I talk about when I talk about God of the unknown. It's not unknown to God. 
It's unknown to me. And I want to connect with the God who knows my unknowns. And the only way to do that, first, I'm going to give you a real simple, no, I'm going to give you a simple word that sometimes is difficult. And that is to, for a moment, why don't you just trust God? And I'm telling you, it's almost like these examples were laid out for me to just remember, you just trust me. Um, you just trust me. Ready? Um, I, I, this, uh, this mom, this mom and dad, hey, Brent, we have the ability to have our group be doing something for the community. We're going to do a food drive and a, and, a, and a gift and a toy drive. Two things. We're going to do two things. Can you help us with what happens after we gather this stuff? And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, well, you know what? Ready? I'm going to be honest. I'm always honest. I'm going to say it out loud. There's probably some people I know that would take it. And I'm not talking about take the stuff. I'm talking about other organizations that go, yeah, we'll pass all this stuff out. And I'll just be this, the, our church would just be that middleman. And then I, 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 I uh, the mom saw me, uh, I think it was Friday. Hey, Brent, did, did, did Curtis talk to you? Yeah, he did. And so we had conversation. And I said, well, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't do the food. And then, uh, and I told Connie, man, I, I just, I told her, I said, let's just do the toys, you know, because, you know why? Because I already had stuff laid out on how we could do the toys. It was me. And Connie goes, well, you know what? We're talking to some other people, and, you know, they, they're, they're excited. They think they, you can do this and this and this, and we can, excuse me, we can do this and this and this. And I went, wow, okay, new plan. Trust God with this new plan. Because God already knew something else that I didn't know. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? So I began to just trust God with what's going to be happening. And I'm telling you what, I was excited. Because when it's never just you, it brings about joy. God is working within a body of believers that's bigger than what we think sometimes. And we need to trust God with what your unknown is, what my unknown is, and realize God's got it all worked out. Because it's not just about one. It's about all of us. Then there's a, well, let me get to my story. Because, <laughs> uh, Pastor Mark, I enjoyed going through the book of Daniel. Because there's so much that is in there. I talked a little bit uh, last week about uh, Daniel, and I talked about the three gentlemen, and there at one point in time was four in the fire and, of the fiery furnace. And so you talk about individuals who, um, I mean, they, they, they pray to God. They know God. They actually do more than trust God. They obey his commands. He had laid out plans for them ahead of time, and so they learned those plans, and they had the opportunity to not do the plan or do the plan, God's plan. They chose to do God's plan and trust God's plan, not knowing what lied ahead in its entirety. Ready? They knew that if they followed God's plan, there would be a fiery furnace. They knew that. They didn't know what lied after going into the fire furnace, did they? They talked about, you know, if God does this or God does that, whatever God does. So they were trusting in the unknown with the God who knew. And what happened? They come out of the fiery furnace. Or how about Daniel thrown into the lion's den? Daniel knew the decree. It was a simple decree. Hey, you got to do this, 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 and if you don't do it, then you're going in the den. No problem. King sealed it. You got to do it. I'm going in the lion's den. King, there's nothing you can do about it. You told me there's nothing you can do about it. I know God, and I trust God with whatever God will do. And what happened? Daniel didn't know those lions weren't going to tear him up or eat him. He just knew he was in God's hands. 
And one like that, because you know what, think about this very quick, quickly, is that if you go into a fiery furnace and you die, so what? I'm in the presence of God because I obeyed God. If I get thrown into the lion's den and they tear me to shreds, or cut, ready, I'm going to go into our kind of terms. If I go into the world who is the lion's den and they're out to tear me to shreds, put me down, mess me up, I still trust in a God who will take me to the other side and I will be with him. I don't care. I, I do care of this sense that everyone that comes in contact with me knows that I trust in a God who knows my unknown. In Daniel chapter 2, I'm going to read the story very quickly. Starting in verse 1, chapter 2. In the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. His mind was troubled and he could not sleep. So the king summoned the magicians, the enchanters, the sorcerers, the astrologers to tell him what he had dreamed. When they stood in Excuse me, when they came and stood in before the king, he said to them, hey, I had a dream that troubles me, and I want to know what the dream means. And so the astrologers answered the king, may the king live forever. You might as well butter him up when you know you have no idea what the unknown is. So they began to butter up the king. That takes place all the time. May the king live forever. Tell your servants the, the dream, and we will interpret it. So now we have the cockiness. Uh, they have no idea what the dream is, yet they're talking smack. That's some good sportsmanship-like stuff. You know, when you, when you have no idea what lies ahead, I'm just going to start talking. I'm buttering up the king, and then I'm all chest out. Yeah, bring it on, king. Tell us the dream. We will tell you what it means. Verse 5, the king replied to the astrologers, this is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me what my dream was and interpret it, I will have you cut into pieces and your houses turned into piles of rubble. But if you tell me the dream and explain it, you will receive from me gifts and rewards and great honor. So tell me the dream and interpret it for me. And they're still cocky. Once more, they replied, let the king tell his servants the dream and we will interpret it. That's after knowing a little bit what lies ahead. That takes some guts. The king then answered, I'm at verse 8, I am certain you are trying to gain time because you realize that this is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me the dream, there's only one penalty for you. If you have conspired to tell me misleading and wicked things, hoping the situation will change, so then tell me the dream, and I will know that you have uh, you can interpret it for me. The astrologers answered the king, there is no one on earth who can do what the king asks. Hmm. No king, however great and mighty, has ever asked, no one, excuse me, however great and mighty has ever asked such a thing of any magician or enchanter or astrologer. What the king asks is too difficult. No one can reveal it to the king except the gods, and that's in little g, except the gods, and they do not live among humans. So now they're telling excuses on already who, how are we going to get out of what he said he's going to do to us? Kill us and destroy our homes? How are we going to get out of that? And so they go on. No one can do this. It's too difficult. No one can, can uh, do what you are asking. The only ones that can do it are the gods. And guess what, king? The gods aren't even here. That's messed up. So verse 14, oh, excuse me, verse 12. This made the king so angry and furious that he ordered the execution of all the wise men of Babylon. So because some of these guys came in in the presence of the king, they messed it up for everyone that is in this realm of, of telling dreams, of telling what lies ahead, and, and they're the, the smart ones, they're the wise men. They're the ones who are the top member. If you go into early chapter one, give me the best of the best is what the king got. 
And now the best of the best can't do it. So kill them all. So the decree was issued to put the wise men to death, and the men were sent to look for Daniel and his friends to put them to death. Because I'm going to tell you this, they already knew who was on the list to execute. Verse 14, when Arioch, the commander of the king's guard, had gone out to put to death the wise men of Babylon, Daniel spoke to him, ready, with wisdom and tact. So he, a man who really doesn't know all that lies ahead still has the power of God in his words. He asked the king off, king's officer, why did the king is, issue such a harsh decree? Eric then explained the matter to Daniel. At this, Daniel went to the king and asked him for time so that he might interpret the dream for him. That's the same thing the king was having a discussion with those that were in his presence. I think you're just doing stuff to buy time. And here Daniel says, hey, can we have a little bit more time so that we can interpret the dream for him? Then Daniel returned to his house. Please listen to all of this part. He returned to the house and he explained the matter to his friends. Friends, I'm telling you, when we talk about praying for one another and joining in prayer together for what we don't know lies ahead as a church, let's do it. Daniel gathers his three friends. They're, they're going to have a different name here. They're going to have their real names, okay? He gathers, uh, not what the, the king gave him. He gathers his, free, his three friends to explain to them what has happened and what's up. And uh, one was Hananiah. One was Michelle, and one was Azariah. He urged them to plead for mercy from God. Ready? Let me slow that down. He urged them to plead for mercy from God of heaven concerning this mystery so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Notice here how the king puts them all together in a lump sum, and Daniel wants to make sure the king knows, whoa, 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 whoa. Those who follow the God who knows the unknown, we shouldn't die because of them. During the night, during the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. And then Daniel did this, ready? He praised God of heaven and said, praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. He disposes kings and raises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with him. I thank and praise you, God, of my ancestors. You have given me wisdom and power. You have made known to me what we have asked of you. Did you hear what I said? You have made known to me what I've asked of you. You have made known to us the dream of the king. So then after all of that, then Daniel goes with Arioch, whom the king had appointed to execute the wise men of Babylon, and said to him, do not execute the wise men of Babylon. Take me to the king, and I will interpret the dream for him. And they, they, he does. But I want you to ha have this understanding. Daniel had no idea what lied ahead. And in a quickness, he's asking for time. And the, the beauty of it, because sometimes, you know, sometimes we pray, ah, oh, God, this is up ahead. I'm not sure what even goes beyond it. Uh, you know, I'm just only seeing things in front of me. I, I'm, and let's, I'm messed up, God. I'm scared, and I don't know. And sometimes we have to wait more than a day. And that is hard. Cool thing about this story, though, man, Daniel must be tight with God because he prayed to God. He had his friends join in to the prayer. He was specific about what he knew. And that night, God revealed to him, that is the coolest thing on the planet. And then, as I was reading this, because remember what I said earlier? Daniel's like, hey, don't execute us with all those other guys who ain't going to interpret the dream. <laughs> don't put us in that lump sum. But you notice when he got, after he got the dream 
and the interpretation. And after he gave all, man, he gave some cool praise to God, did he not? Man, he gave God praise. He, he made us recognize, God, you know everything. And then he says, hey, don't execute all the wise men. Do you see how our heart moves when you're really following God who knows every unknown thing you have? Your heart does change. You begin to see things differently. And Daniel says it. Hey, 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 hey. I won't execute them all. Let me just go talk to the king. And he does. Now, I want to do a couple things here. Um, there's my Bible. There's one thing I did not print, so I'll have to go to some, to, to some, some shortness. I'm going to go to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. It's after Psalms. So that's easy because Psalms is really big. When, once you start flipping, you see Psalms. Then Proverbs is right after Psalms. And I'm going to go to Proverbs 3. I talked about one of the... One of the the easiest words is to trust God who knows everything. One of the hardest things, let me back up a sec. Hey, one of the hardest things is to trust God who knows everything. Um, that's just, I believe the way it is. I know this though, that if you actually try to really follow God, it does get a little easier to trust God with what lies ahead. It does get easier. You know, there'll be different situations, so don't get me wrong. There's going to be some more situations that are going to come up, and it's going to still be hard. Oh, I got to trust. I don't know if I, I, can, I can't do this. I know I can't do this. So how I trust him? It will still be hard. Some of them will still be hard, but some of them will be, hey, you know what? You just need to trust God, and yeah, I can do that. Sometimes it's easier when you're talking about other people and it's unknown. I could, I could do that. You know, things hurt me, though, and, you know, like with Bud and Jane and the Foley's, and you don't know what lies ahead. And for me, I'm going to tell you what, that's a little bit of a slower walk because I really don't know. I know things get close on certain things. I prepare my heart on certain things. But, man, you love some things so much. That's where I think it's a little bit harder because you want to hold on so much, and it's you that wants to hold on so much, and it's a little harder to trust God. But I'm telling you this, trust, trust God, and watch what happens. Because can I say, I, I, I'm going to say this, you know what? Because of age, which all catches up to all of us, and guess what? This does happen to all of us. If Jane passes away, if Brother Bud passes away, if Brother Foley uh, uh, b passes away, or Sister Foley, Lawrence and Pinky, if they pass away, if Phyllis passes away, if any others on our list pass away that we know personally are following God and trusting God, you know what? When that last breath is taken, they get to see who they have served all or most of their lives. And now if I will trust God, guess what? When I take my last breath, I will see my friends again. I know it. And I will join with them in praise of God who we have served side by side in difficult times, in joyous times. And we will serve the one who's taken us through all of it. Man. So even with what lies ahead is unknown, God has it, and I do trust him. Proverbs chapter 3, my child, that's me, that's you, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart, for they will give you a long and satisfying life. Never let loyalty and kindness get away from you. Water them like a necklace. Write them deep in your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people, and you will gain a good reputation. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend or lean on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will direct your paths. 
Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn your back on evil. Then you will gain renewed health and vitality. I know as I read some of those scriptures, some of you, I do know, uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. Uh, I do, I uh, uh, can't remember how it goes, and, then, and he will make your path straight. We, we know that. It's easy sometimes to, to utter the words of the scriptures, but when you take those verses before and after, you know what? You've got to take his word. It's some commands in there that you have to do. You've got to do what he's asked us to do. You got to water it. You got to nurture it. You got to take care of what God has said in your life by doing what He said. When you start doing stuff, that's the watering. When you start doing stuff, that's the sunshine beating down. Actually, you know what it is? When you start walking those steps that God has the pathway laid out for you, when you start doing that, it's the Holy Spirit that is going, Hey, I got the watering part for you. Hey, I got the sunshine part for you. Hey, I, and, and you know what? If you go with the stuff that they're doing downstairs, Jesus is the vine and we are in it. And as the Spirit waters upon us with the Holy Spirit and the work within our lives, then, and we're connected to that vine like what they're learning downstairs, Jesus, who is the branch, excuse me, we're the branches. Jesus, who is that stock that we're connected to, he's the one that's given us the life that is vital, the, the vitality. And whoops, 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 I'm getting too excited. So you can all hear me even without it, huh? Because God gives us what is needed when we walk with him and he guides those steps. So now we trust in the steps that are ahead of us. And some of those steps will lead, ready? Because it is that October season and I know people like to get scared and stuff. And you know what? When there's a point in reality in life where you're a little bit scared of what's behind the door, what's in the darkness, I read a scripture that said, God, he's there and he is the light. And I'm going to tell you this, I don't care how, I love this, I love science sometimes and uh, Jade, and she's in chemistry, and she's all, we have conversations. I love chemistry. <laughs> and so uh, with science, I don't care if we could make this room pitch black to where you couldn't even see your hand in front of your face. I've been in places like that, those haunted houses and stuff because of the season. I've been in places, I don't go no more. I've been in places like that where you can't see your hand in front of your face. If it's that dark and you will light one tiny match over in the corner over there, I will see that lit tiny match. You know, that's God. Now, I'm going to tell you what, some of you are sitting there going, well, that, a tiny light, you know, that's tiny. I'm going to tell you what, my God is so big, the light will never be tiny. And if God was to be in a room that was pitch black, guess what? It would no longer be pitch black. It would lit, be lit up shining with all of his glory. Those are why I can open up a door. Those are why I can take steps and trust God. That is why with whatever lies ahead, you know, people, I, sometimes I think people like to uh, uh, pounce on what is unknown. Oh, you know what? You serve a God who knows everything that you don't know. What, what if this was going to happen? And they try, they try to bring out all the evil. Well, what if this was to happen? Well, what if this was to happen? Well, what if this was to happen? And they want to they want to batter your mind with all of this negativity. They want to batter your mind with things that could be uh, life threatening. They want to batter your mind to where you will turn your back on God and do your own thing and try and follow your own. Well, maybe I can do this. I can make this work. And it, it said in Scripture in Proverbs, turn your back on evil. So if that's coming your way, turn your back on it. And if it's difficult to make the turn, begin by this, God, please help me. I used to do that. I'd go, you know what? Because we've got just a few minutes. These kids nowadays, <laughs> we're driving home from, from, from uh, Six Flags, and they, they all want to be scared. I want to see this and have it scare me. And they, they, they can't even get past the entrance because it is a little bit scary. And, and they're told, well, it's a lot bit scary when you go over there. 
And so in that being scared, they don't want to, they, 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 they don't want to go. So we're going home. And so they got this plan. Let's start watching some scary movies. That'll kind of get us, you know, where we can take it. And they're rattling off movies that I grew up with in the 80s. And I'm talking about early 80s. I'm talking about the, not Friday the 13th part 25. I'm talking about Friday the 13th part one. <laughs> Poltergeist part one. <laughs> Enemyville Horror part one. None of these remakes and all this other stuff. Talk about the first ones where you're so scared. Ready? I, I'll tell you a story. Watching Friday the 13th, me and my buddies, we all think we're big and bad. And, and you know what? That stupid movie gave me nightmares. I might have told this one other time. I'm talking about where I go in my room. For, well, first of all, you got to make the walk home from the movie. The, we lived on a small army base, military base, actually. And so you had to walk from the movies, and you kind of cut and you got your schools right next to the movie theater and bowling alley. And then once you cut, then you get past the church. Oh, God bless the church. And you get past the church, and then it's the woods. Your apartment's way up there. I can remember talking about that tiny light. I can see my, I can see my room, actually. <laughs> Third floor. And uh, it's like, okay, walking off. Shh. Click, click. Man, was that a shotgun? That sounded like someone's cocking a gun and going to shoot me. I start scaring myself about nothing that is there. Get home. Now, if you ever saw the movie, I, I don't recommend it, but if you ever saw the movie, one of the, one of the scenes was where this couple, they wanted to go fool around. They go to this, this cabin. I've been, I've been a camp director, so we used to tell these stories. <laughs> they go to the empty cabin, and guess what happens? You die. And so they go to the empty cabin, and an arrow comes up through under the bed all the way through. And I'm telling you, that scene gave me nightmares for a long time. And, and you know what? Connie will tell you, I'm a hoarder a little bit. So I put all my cool stuff under the bed. There's no way anybody could be under there. Yet I'm still having freaked out dreams. Someone's under my bed. But there's, how could they? I did not trust enough. But I'm telling you what. So the shotgun thing in the woods, God, if you just get me home, that will be good. I mean, I just got like two blocks. It's right there. Or ready? They were like California blocks. I actually only have one block. It's a long block. God, just help me. No, God, I know you. Man, you surround me, God. That's okay. That's how you pray when you're scared. You start, when you're scared, some of, or is it just me? Man, God, please help me. This is freaking me out. Ready? And I'm going to close with this. There's other situations in your life, not just scary stuff. Uh, Connie and I, I think it was Connie and I, we were driving home from a, a meeting or something. Uh, and, and I thought I had enough gas. <laughs> and all of a sudden, okay, I, I heard a little car. It, it has, when you, get, when you get to the bottom, that, like that empty area, it has two bars. And I'm thinking, two bars? Man, um, I'm, I'm at Long Beach. I think I can make it. You know why? Because there's two of us. God bless two of us. That means carpool lane. And I'm not going to be idling in traffic. So we're flying. That's my problem. I'm flying. <laughs> flying. And I'm getting close to the Manchester exit. Actually, it was the one before that when I'm like, oh, man, this is one bar. Oh, man, that last bar just left. I, and I saw there was cops up ahead doing their little, God bless the cops. But when they do that little weave, that is, uh, it irritates me. That means I'm stuck better carpool lane or no what, and I'm on no bars. <laughs> and so I'm like, forgive me. I'm California style. Throw my, well, better, because I throw my blinker on. I threw my blinker on, and I'm cutting across lanes. <laughs> I'm cutting across. All, I'm like, you know what? I'm creaking my neck. It's hurting. <laughs> And I get up, and I get to the gas station. But I pr I'm telling you, I was praying. When that bar left, I had no idea, because we had never had the bar leave. <laughs> I had no idea what lied ahead. And I prayed. Let me do one more for you. Because <laughs> gas station, maybe that's when I do a lot of praying. <laughs> okay? I'm taking like eight kids from northern Illinois to Oklahoma, uh, to Oklahoma City. And we're going we're gonna to see things, 
and we're going to pray, and they're going to a Christian university to check it out. And, of course, there's the memorial there. And, and you know, so I, I don't want people ever to forget that there's evil in the world, but we can still pray for families. We can still pray for evil to stop. And so we saw the memorial and the chairs and everything for Oklahoma City bombing. And, uh, but as we're driving, here's the thing. Once you leave St. Louis from northern Illinois, you come down, cornfields, but you know that. You know how to handle that. You do St. Louis, Six Flags. Yeah, I've been there, done that. I know how to handle that. But once you get past that, there's a lot of things you don't know what city's next or anything like that. And all of a sudden, we're driving, and we leave real, like 2 o'clock in the morning. So you know what happens when you leave at 2 o'clock in the morning, and there's youth who have been up all night, all excited the night before. Hey, where are we going? We're skipping school. Oh, I was bad. We were skipping school. We're going to Oklahoma. So they're all, yay! And then we get in the van, and they're all, <laughs> while I'm driving by myself in the dark, talk about unknowns, and all of a sudden, like, oh, my God. No, actually, they woke up. Now we're laughing and having fun. Laughing and having fun is distraction when you're driving. Especially when you're driving and you're distracted and laughing, and all of a sudden you're like, <laughs> you know, we were driving a van. They had no bars. <laughs> it ran out of gas. And I knew there was a gas station down. We got saved. Would I have learned from that? No. There's another year. Different kids, same route. Driving, tell them stories about the time we ran out of gas, ran out of gas. So now we're like running out of gas. And we're kind of not laughing no more. And I know there's this time though, because I know some of the unknown, I know they put a gas station in between the highway. Like here, you're going this way, here, and you can go up in the gas station, or you're going this way, and you go into the gas station that way. <laughs> Excuse me. And I can see the lights in the dark, because it was dark. Can you see the lights, guys? Hey, man, I sure hope we can make it. I, in fact, I think at that time I was like, uh, we pulled into the toll booth. Where is the nearest gas station? Because I knew I needed it. We were done. You got to go about two miles up. Two miles. Okay. 18 passenger van. Six miles to the gallon. Someone went too fast, so now we're at four miles to the gallon. I don't know if I have a gallon. <laughs> and so we start going. And we start getting excited. We can see it. Uh, the lights are getting closer. It's not the unknown. Now we know. Everybody's praying. We had this one, one young lady. Boy, she was our prayer warrior. We're all laughing one time. Pastor Mark, come on up. I'm going to close. We're all laughing one time in the daylight and, and having fun, accidentally throwing DVDs out the window and have to go back because back, that was in the back in the day where they charge you 80 bucks if you lost one because it was a rental. <laughs> and so... Oh, it's a whole nother story. And we're laughing and having fun. And there's a car broke down. And this girl goes, hey, 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 hey. We need to pray for them. And so we stopped what we were doing. And we were praying for people we did not know. Talk about the unknown, right? So we got this mile, we got this two miles to go to get gas, right? And so everyone's like, up, can we do this? Can we do this? The lights are getting closer. They're getting a little bit more excited. The thing about this gas station is when you got in it, you had to go up a huge hill. I'm like, okay. We had this big guy. Man, he was big. He could eat and eat and eat. <laughs> and, but I love him. And so he's in the front seat. And you, you ever, you know, we do the dumbest things. Talk about trying to do it yourself. Everybody, come on. Let's rock this man up the hill to make sure. And so we're all rocking for That don't do nothing. But it was fun for the moment. It made us feel like we were in the participation of what lied ahead. And when we got to the top, it was done. It was out of gas. We coasted to the pump. God is good in the unknown. That's why I'm telling you. God is good in the unknown. Trust him with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. Take his word and he will make your paths straight. God will help you walk through the unknown. Why? Because he knows it. Let us pray. God, you are so good to us. You care for us. You know everything about us. 
sometimes we mess it up and try to step in and take control and, and do things our way. We got a better plan than you, God. I actually thank you for allowing us to, uh, you know what? I'll walk with you. You're doing it wrong, but I'm right here. And when you stumble, when you fall, I'm right here. God, I thank you for the times that I have stumbled, I have fallen, I have thought I could do it better, I thought I had the plan. Thank you for being there. Because you always make things right. And so when someone says, hey, that was great what you did, I know who to give the glory to. It is you. Thank you for being God who knows our unknown walks with us. If there's someone here that does not have that close relationship with you, I pray that they would just ask a simple prayer. God, I believe, I know that you do things that are greater than what I can do. I know that you can uh, help me in the things, especially by not following you. Help me to turn my back on evil. Help me to uh, stop doing the things you don't want me to do. Make my path straight. Forgive me. A simple thing that we can pray. Pray that they ask for that forgiveness. God, you are so mighty that you'll walk us through the unknown. And for those of us who say we're following you, God, help us because there will be an unknown. But we trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Never go in the pastor's car. <laughs> <clears throat> the chimes of time bring out the news another day is through one to the pen was that someone new you may have had it strength your courage to renew I have news for you, it is no secret, it's not in the news, what he's done for others. With my pocket open and his heart in you. It is <laughs> we like the first part. Yeah. <laughs> I told Pastor Mark as we were looking, we were you know, looking for that song and looking for words and chords. And sometimes when you find words and chords, they don't. I told him back there, I just hope the chords are in the right spot. <laughs> and uh, sometimes it's hard with the words. You know what? It was the unknown. Here's the thing. I trust God because with the simplest thing of the chorus, it's no secret what God can do. And he will do it for you. I'm so glad that you guys joined us this morning to worship together with us. Those that were listening on the phone, joining with us. It is a joy to worship together. I encourage you to make friends. Have, have that, that confidence and that one that you can walk with at a time where when it seems really scary, someone can pray right along with you. But we're like heading in the unknown. This Wednesday, oh yeah. All right, let's plug it one more time. This Wednesday, 100th episode of Hello Again Wednesday. It's like a 15 minute bit. I'm doing a one hour presentation live. There's going to be Zoom boxes. Hopefully, it'll be bigger than uh, uh, what was those boxes? And Paul, Paul. Hollywood Squares. I hope it's bigger than Hollywood Squares. At one time, I said, I hope I get 100 people to be right in the squares. But whatever. <laughs> I already know this. I already have one excited live audience participant, and that's Karina. She's downstairs. Help us. 
can I do the explosions? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we'll do it. And she can do it. So now I'm like, okay, I got to get more explosions. Ooh. I tease. The pyrotechnics are not that great. Hey, it's just me, right? <laughs> but it's funny. This is an opportunity where we're going to actually ask different questions and, and just have some laughter, have some fun. And who knows? There might be part eight. I don't know. I'm not Dr. Bill or anything, and you'll see that in every episode. <laughs> but we'll have fun in this. Okay? So you can join along with that. But especially, like I always do with my Hello Again Wednesday, join us for Bible study at 5.30. And you can even do that via Zoom, too. If you can't make it up uh, downstairs, you can make it on Zoom. We are in the book of James. And man, Pastor Mark and Cindy, they are doing such a fantastic job. And, and our equipment's getting better and better to see. Praise the Lord. And so, uh, you know what? This Wednesday, 5.30. As we talk about prayer, especially for these prayer for those who really need the anointing of healing. But hey, remember the church, this church is in the community. They are going to be thriving with a Thanksgiving dinner which is coming up soon, and they're going to be fighting the Christmas in the neighborhood with our fellow participants around the community joining in. It's not just the church. It's the community for the community in the neighborhood. Uh, but we can't do that. That's what they are. Okay? <laughs> so, so good having each and every one of you. God, thank you for this time we have together. Uh, as we watch them, we ask that you guide us, God. And in all of it, we give you glory. Thank you for what lies ahead, because you are holding our hand. In Jesus' name, amen. Join the service. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you. You have a wonderful day. You too.